Good evening, YouTube. With the latest flame wars regarding feminism versus Thunderfoot going on in the past few months, I felt it was high time to address women in the Bible rather than within atheism. But before we begin, I thought I would recommend my first book on this channel, that being the Bible Handbook, for which you will find a link below. While not a fun read by any stretch of the imagination, it is an excellent resource, and small enough to keep by your front door or in a jacket pocket should any fundamentalist idiot darken your presence. Speaking of the Bible, who better to defend the women within than a woman? Considering the last two jackasses for Jesus were men, the last thing I want to be accused of is being sexist. There are jackasses aplenty among our two genders. Speaking of which, if any of my dear viewers wish to nominate any future jackasses for Jesus, please do so via a PM to yours truly, while telling me why your jackass is worthy of unrelenting reason. Without further ado, allow me to introduce for your poning pleasure, Monica Dentington of TikTok Ministries, and like a great deal of the faithful, she is a rabidly delusional homophobic imbecile. For the rest of this production, I shall be referring to her by the more apropos Super K TikTok twit. Before you ask, no, that is not me with the editing skills of a lobotomized baboon. Well, perhaps I am being a bit unkind to the baboon. That is TikTok Twit's own headache-inducing transitions. Or at the homosexual pulpit. God does not appoint women to teach or have authority over men. This is just an outright lie, you guys. The proponents of the homosexual pulpit love to quote a bad translation of 1 Timothy 2.12. That translation says, I do not permit a woman to teach or to have authority over a man. She must be silent. The footnoted translation of the NIV says, I do not permit a woman to teach or assume authority over her husband. She must be quiet. Okay, now this is a translation that is actually uh, more consistent with the rest of Scripture. To say that a woman is not permitted to teach or assume authority over any man is not consistent with the rest of the Bible. Pray tell, what is this homosexual pulpit of which you speak of, TikTok twit? Is Christendom becoming more fabulous? Is the flock more fashionably dressed? Queer eye for the Christian guy? Are the peerless interior decorating skills of your homosexual brethren something to fear? Humor and stereotypes aside, from what I have seen in my own personal experience, a good deal of homosexual people are rejecting religion altogether. But let's get back to the matter at hand, which is women in the Bible. Remember how only moments ago TikTok Twit spoke in no certain terms that her flaccid apologetics are more consistent with the rest of scripture? <laughs> well, let's look at that scripture, shall we? Perhaps from your new international version, since you seem to be such an aficionado of it, I shall cite all verses from the Bible from your own biblical flavor from this moment forth. Judges 19.25 So the man took his concubine and sent her outside to them, and they raped her and abused her throughout the night, and at dawn they let her go. Some time ago, I was debating a theist via my nom de plume, Robert Green Ingersoll, on Facebook. He suggested that the concubine in question somehow did something and deserved such a loathsome violation. There is no excuse for rape, my good people. Not now, not in ages past, not ever. Rape is a grotesque assault both on mind and body. To imply otherwise is to degrade women everywhere. Fear not, TikTok twit. We shall get a true representation of what the Bible thinks of women before we are through. And this is the scripture that they use to try to nullify all of the rest of the scriptures that indicate that God places and ordains women for positions of leadership. 
Like it or not, TikTok twit, women in your Bible are at best property and are bought and sold just like any other slaves. The fact that the many wives of your greatest fictional characters within said mythology are there to get impregnated and produce offspring. As far as I know, within the near infinite begatting in numbers, the names of the mothers are never mentioned. Nor, so far as I have been led to believe, are the names of any female children mentioned within numbers, for they were of no importance to the authors. Let's look at Mary, the virgin, not the courtesan, who is by far the most important female figure in the Bible, being for all intents and purposes a goddess in all but name. The sum total of her accomplishments are getting pregnant, transporting herself from point A to point B, and plopping out the baby Jesus. Truly, when you boil down the various absurdities, that is all she does. The details of her life, post and pre-fertilization, and her death are of such little consequence that none of it is mentioned within the cloddish fiction you hold so dear. The mother of God, the only one on record to have sex with the big sky daddy himself, holds authority over no one. Not her husband, not her child. She leads, teaches, nor commands not one living soul. The only exception being demanding that they move from one city to another, but even in this your Bible is inconsistent. If this is your most important woman, within your fables, what does that say about the rest of your gender? Deuteronomy 21, 10 through 14. When you go to war against your enemies, and the Lord your God delivers into your hands, and you take captives, if you notice among the captives a beautiful woman, and you are attracted to her, you may take her as your wife. Bring her into your home, and have her shave her head, trim her nails, and put aside the clothes she was wearing when captured. After she has lived in your house, and mourned her father and mother for a full month, then you may go to her, and be her husband, and she shall be your wife. If you are not pleased with her, let her go wherever she wishes. You must not sell her or treat her as a slave, since you have dishonored her. So, let's recap on that, shall we? Go to war and abduct a woman you think is attractive. Take her home, shave her head, wait a month, and she is your wife. But you had best not sell her as a slave, but feel free to rape the shit out of her. Because, as it says in Ephesians 5.22, Wives, submit yourselves to your husbands as you do the Lord. That goes double for you, TikTok twit. My dear, abused, kidnapped, sex slave wives, do as you are told and have no opinion before your husband. For that is the impeccably high moral standard the Bible has to not let you be sold as slaves. I'm going to give you just a few examples. If you guys want to hear more about this, go and watch the House of God series. We go through all of these in detail. But I'm going to give you just a few examples. Deborah was a prophetess in the Old Testament who was also the leader of all of Israel. She actually led them into war. And she um, was someone who was appointed by God to be obeyed by the men. Phoebe was a deaconess, which is now also um, beginning to be acknowledged in the more modern translations. The word deaconess has classically been translated servant. People are beginning to acknowledge that these things have been mistranslated where uh, women have been portrayed only as servants. They are now acknowledging that that word is actually deacon, which is the same exact word that is used to describe uh, male deacons in the body of Christ. Bravo, TikTok twin. Bravo on finding Phoebe in Romans, a woman of such monumental importance that less than 50 words are scribbled within your Bible about her. Her contributions must have been staggering to warrant a behemoth two sentences. 
Now, as for Debbie, I bothered to look up Judges 4 and 5. Let's do the cliff notes, shall we? Please understand, I am about to butcher the pronunciation of people and places. Debbie, for reasons that are never discussed, is a leader in Israel. She talks the locals into forming an army of 10,000. They go off and kill a rival by the name of Surya that has been a harassment more or less to Israel. He was a leader of a rival town called Harosheth Yogahim. Debbie climbs a mountain and her army kills all of Surya's men. Then Debbie and her friend Barak sing a song. And that's it. No, really, that's it. Half of her story in the Bible is her and Barak singing a song, and a rather meager one in that. Tick-tock twit, where is your Rosa Parks? Where is your Marie Curie? Where are the game changers, the women who demand equal rights? Well, go on. I want to know. I invite you to post a video response or debate me in the comments below. In fact, I outright ask you to do it. And just in case you miss my invitation, the name of your channel will be below for all my dear viewers to share this production with you. So, go on, TikTok Twit, and give me your best. After all, you have both denial and the divine guarding your back. But it has been translated differently, which again is an example of the lying pen of the scribes distorting the scriptures. Priscilla is an example of a woman who taught men in the Bible right alongside of her husband. Did you honestly think that no one is going to bother to look up all the crapulence that spews forth from that diuretic orifice you call a mouth? TikTok twit. Having looked into Acts 18, Priscilla is mentioned as a party that is present for the events that take place. However, she has no hand in any of them. Nowhere does it say that Priscilla did anything nor said anything of any importance or relevance, none whatsoever. She is the ideal biblical wife, nigh invisible save for producing offspring. Really, TikTok Twit, is this the best you have? Priscilla was not a hero for civil rights and did not one damn thing to advance her understanding of the universe. She is a wallflower at best, or an ornament at worst, for she says not one single word within Acts 18. Not one damn word. Once again, Let's look elsewhere to see how the Bible views women. Isaiah 13, 9, 12, 15, and 16. See, the day of the Lord is coming, a cruel day, with wrath and fierce anger, to make the land desolate and destroy the sinners within it. I will make people scarcer than pure gold, more rare than the gold of Ophir. Whoever is captured will be thrust through, all who are caught shall fall by the sword. Their infants shall be dashed to pieces before their eyes. Their houses will be looted, and their wives violated. Remember, boys and girls, raping the wives of other men and cutting their children to bite-sized pieces is holy so long as God tells you it is. So keep listening to that creepy voice in your heads. You are not rapidly insane, but rather doing the work of the Lord. And God is love. Hulda was a prophetess in the Old Testament who prophesied to one of the kings of Israel. She was acknowledged as a prophetess. She was acknowledged as being appointed by God, by the king of Israel. And he listened to the word of the Lord that came through her. In 2 John, we see the chosen lady. And John is writing to her. He uh, addresses it, the elder. And then he wrote to the lady chosen by God and her children. And he goes on to give her instructions about how she is supposed to shepherd the flock of God. That is been entrusted to her. It gives her specific instructions that there are certain men, false teachers, that are trying to infiltrate the church and that she was not to have anything to do with them, that she was to use her authority to keep those men out. 
okay, so that all the work that she had done um, within uh, that body of believers, those children of God, that it wouldn't be in vain, that it wouldn't be ruined. So he gave her instructions to operate as someone in a position of authority in the church, in a position specifically to shepherd the flock by keeping the wolves out. Well, you got me this time, TikTok twit. Hulda was a woman of such massive influence, a game changer of the costume department. Your Bible literally says that she was the keeper of the wardrobe. No, really, look it up. This time we have a woman who acts as a mouthpiece for God, who delivers threats to kill everyone and more or less burn the land to a crisp. But does she talk to the king herself? Does she spread this dire warning across the lands? Does she even stick her head out the window and tell all with an earshot that the Lord is pissed and going to kill everybody? <sighs> Again, nope. Because she is a woman, she is not nearly important enough to tell the king herself what is going on. Call me crazy, but if I were a king, I would like to hear the threats of impending doom straight from the horse's mouth. But that's just me being, oh, what's the word? Oh yes, sane. Moving on to your chosen lady, who in damnation is she? Yes, that little segue of yours talks about love and how to keep contaminating the flock with reason, logic, and basic common sense. In other words, free thinkers like yours truly, but not a single attribute is dedicated to your so-called chosen lady. Not having the basic importance of having a name, not a word if she was fair or ugly, young or old, fat or thin, blonde or brunette. Speaking of hair color, TikTok twit, as for yours. Now there's a color found in nature. While I am more than aware that I am doing the one and only one ad hominem within this production and fully admit while doing so, if you want people to take you seriously, you might want not to look like you got in a front-end collision with several cosmetic-laden semi-trucks. And then possibly most importantly, we see the example of Jesus Christ as he chose the very first person to go and proclaim the fact that he was risen from the dead. The person that he chose was not one of the 12 apostles, but indeed it was a woman. And he said to her specifically, go and tell my brothers that I am alive. And he told her that she was to give them instructions that they were to go and wait for him in Galilee. So here we see that Jesus entrusted the most important message that has ever graced the face of this planet, which is that the Christ is alive and risen. He entrusted that message to a woman, and he told her also that she was not only to preach that message to them, but also that she was to give them an instruction from the Lord. You know what I love the most about the Bible, TikTok twit? Other than the bloodshed and unchecked crimes against humanity, it is the paradoxes and contradictions. Let's have a quick example. Where did Jesus tell his disciples to go after his resurrection? In Matthew and Mark, he told them to go to Galilee. And in Luke and in Acts, he told them to hang out in Jerusalem. Now let's look at Mary Magdalene a touch closer, shall we? So. What happened with her at the tomb? In Matthew, Mary the mom and Mary the hooker go to the tomb and there is an earthquake and an angel appears. And he, she, or it pushed back the stone and then sat on it. In John, there is no earthquake or angel. Let me say that again. There is no earthquake or angel. Mary, the friend with benefits, shows up before sunrise and sees that the stone has been moved and the tomb is empty. She panics and runs to the disciples to tell of the body snatching. But there is another story in Matthew where Mary Magdalene is bawling her eyes out in front of the tomb. This time, without Mom or the earthquake, she peeks inside and sees that two angels are inside, with the corpse, one at its head, another at its feet. It must be noted that no one moved or even touched that damn rock in our third and final version. These are three different accounts. 
three different stories for being the most important message that has ever graced the face of this planet it lacks the smallest shred of continuity for the sake of all reason tiktok twit matt was so grossly incompetent he could not get his own story straight I would not call this blind faith, but rather blinding stupidity. So, anytime you hear people um, saying that God doesn't appoint women to teach or have authority over men, that's ridiculous. It's all over the Bible. You can go look up all of those examples. Please understand that they are blowing smoke in your face and that they are counting on the fact that you are going to believe them based upon the force of their own breath and the power of their own position instead of going to the Word of God and finding out for yourself. You need to stop following blind guides blindly and you need to go and read what the Bible has to say and understand that no matter how many letters they have behind their name and no matter how well respected they are in Christian circles, None of them have the line item veto authority on the Bible. Oh, the irony. It burns. Let's take a look at some of the lines that you have ignored, shall we? Numbers 31, 15, 17, and 18. Moses was angry with the officers of the army, the commanders of thousands, and the commanders of hundreds who had returned from battle. Have you allowed all the women to live, he asked them. Now kill all the boys. And kill every woman who has slept with a man. But save for yourselves every girl who has never slept with a man. That's right. The survivors of God's holy wholesale slaughter. The mothers, sisters, and little brothers of these girls were butchered, so Moses and his crew could have a new flock of little girls to rape at their whim. How about Hermione Granger? Exodus 22:18. Do not allow a sorceress to live. Remember that concubine that got raped all night? Let's review and see what happened the morning after. Judges 19, 25 through 28. But the men would not listen to him. So the man took his concubine and sent her outside to them, and they raped her and abused her throughout the night, and at dawn they let her go. At daybreak, the woman went back to the house where her master was staying, fell down at the door, and lay there until daylight. When her master got up in the morning and opened the door of the house and stepped out to continue on his way, there lay his concubine, fallen in the doorway of the house, with her hands on the threshold. He said to her, Get up, let's go. But there was no answer. Then the man put her on his donkey and set out for home. When he reached home, he took a knife and cut up his concubine, limb by limb, into twelve parts, and sent them into all the areas of Israel. Merciful! Buddha, is this where you get your morality from, TikTok twit? What value do women have to Christianity when this sex slave is raped to no end and then is dismembered with her remains on display for the good people of Yahweh to gawk at? Keep in mind that within your Bible, the rapists are unpunished. The master who is a murderer is unpunished. Therefore, it can be concluded, since God punished no one, and God did nothing to stop the rape and murder, that it was his will through silent consent. Your Bible does nothing to condemn these men, nor their actions. It says nowhere that their deeds were evil within judges. In fact, the owner sent the concubine out to avoid having his own rear end as violated as she was. A coward, a villain, a murderer, and a man of God. What impeccable ethics your religious forefathers must have had. Face it, TikTok twit, you do not have a damned moral leg to stand on. Okay, and what you will see is them trying to use that authority to go through each one of these women that I just uh, listed out to you, and they're not the only ones. And they try to nullify each one of these scriptures by saying, this doesn't apply today, this doesn't apply, this woman wasn't really an authority. And you're going to see them go through and do this with every one. You understand that when this is their consistent action, whenever they see a woman in authority in the Bible, that there's another agenda there. And that agenda is an anti-family agenda, an agenda that is against the Word of God and that is against the unity in the family of God. Oy. 
TikTok to what is called research. Research. The simple act of bothering to look up and see if any of your statements hold any weight none whatsoever. And my dear lady of the many unnatural hair colors, in that they do not. Not a one. It is almost as if you knew someone such as I would come by and eviscerate your arguments one by one. But speaking of laws that no longer apply, let me ask you a few questions. Have you eaten any pork products? Do you have a tattoo? Do you get a haircut often? Ever read your horoscope? Do you ever read gossip or gossip yourself about anyone from your neighbors to celebrities? Have you ever said fuck to your parents or had your children say fuck to you? Ever work on a Friday? Ever eat lobster or shrimp? Ever had sex before you got married? Ever wear any garment with mixed fabrics? If you said yes to any of these questions, TikTok twit, then odds are you or the ones you love must be executed at once by the laws demanded of your Bible. It's funny how you can say that these laws no longer apply, then perhaps in the next breath call gay people immoral. And if you cannot see the stunning irony there, TikTok twit, you are a complete and total cretin. And you guys, you know, when you get into all this, you can go, and I have teachings on this. If you guys want to dig into what the Word of God says on those scripture verses that, as Jeremiah said, the lying pen of the scribes has perverted those. You can go and look at my teaching on should women be pastors and should women teach. And that's going to go specifically into the Greek, and it's going to show you um, where those things have been twisted. However, I'm going to give you a really simple way to identify where people are twisting scripture. Love and hate. Respect or disrespect? Which one is it? Where you see love, you see God. Where you see hate, that's Satan. So, let me get this straight, TikTok twit. God is love. God loves to drown the planet. God loves to murder the firstborn. God loves to put a sacrificial knife to a child's throat. God loves to cause untold suffering to his chosen man for a petty bet. And, as we have covered earlier in this production, God loves rape. Feel the love, people. Feel the love. Where you see respect, that's God. Where you see disrespect, that's Satan. Oh, the irony abounds. What was that biblical bit about shut up bitch again? That translation says I do not permit a woman to teach or to have authority over a man. She must be silent. The footnote of translation of the NIV says I do not permit a woman to teach or assume authority over her husband. She must be quiet. I do not know if you are married TikTok twit and truth be told I do not give a damn. Nor do I care if your book of Bronze Age myths says that a woman must be silent in church or before her husband. On both sides of that coin, it strips women of their voice. The irony lies in the fact that you seem to have no issue with the suppression of your own gender but rather only in the incalculably petty context in which women are muted. If you are married by some chance, do you ever voice your opinion before your husband? Do you respect his opinion above your own because your Bible says that because he has a penis, he is therefore morally and intellectually superior to you? Wake up, TikTok twit. It is not the devil that regards women as chattel, available for purchase. That is the words of your Bible and your malignant, unconscionable, chauvinistic God. Where you see humility, that's God. Where you see pride, that's Satan. And where you see enmity for the woman, you can know that you are looking at Satan and his sons, his offspring, because that's the marker that God put on him. What you just said is one of the most insanely idiotic things I have ever heard. At no point in your rambling, incoherent response were you even close to anything that could be considered a rational thought. Everyone in this room is now dumber for having listened to it. I award you no points, and may God have mercy on your soul.
Congratulations, TikTok Twit. Out of all of my jackasses for Jesus, you are, so far, the most prime, living, breathing example of cognitive dissonance. Tell me, is living in denial as much bliss as ignorance? But at least you had some ludicrous, discombobulated, obtuse, impuissant, flimsy attempt at a closing argument. Allow me to address what is the fundamental flaw within your feeble arguments. You, as with all manner of the faithful, cherry-pick your ideology. You skim through to find the little tidbits that support your laughably preconceived paradigms, and ignore or prevaricate what is incommodious. Tick-tock, twit, it says that you can sell your daughters into slavery in Exodus. A man bought his wife with foreskins. Jethebda cared so much for his daughter that he sacrificed her in a manner that would make the Maya proud. How can women be considered leaders when they are raped, kidnapped, and murdered time and time again throughout your Bible? For every woman that has any kind of authority in your biblical myths, there are countless others who are property there for the express purpose of being living sex toys for the men. In order to truly be a leader, said woman must have equal standing to any man, and the Bible never even once hints that this is so. Years ago, when I was in college, a young woman in the same class as I declared to my considerable horror and with great pride that she was the property of her husband. This has been the ideological standard of your faith for 1600 years, a standard that degrades women as being subhuman baby factories to this very day. It repulses me to my core. I am of the opinion that the sooner we unshackle ourselves from the chains of faith, the sooner we lose the manacles that bind our minds, our nations, our societies, the far better off we will be. For it is absolutely incomprehensible to me how any woman with the most minuscule iota of self-respect or self-worth can call herself a Christian. This is the Wandering Taoist, reminding you to enjoy the little things.